Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday, Karen Garvin, vlog number four of The Dog Advocate. Today, we're going to be talking about self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, does that have an impact in working with our dogs? I was so fortunate. When I graduated from high school at the young age of 17, I went straight into junior college. I thought I wanted to be a psychologist, so I took a lot of psychology courses. And there was one experiment regarding self-fulfilling prophecy that I never forgot. I'm going to share it with you today. It happened at a university where the psychology students who were studying behavior and they were teaching rats to go through mazes at different times and studying how they learn. Well, this university, they set up an experiment. They told one group of students about these maze bright rats that were going to be coming to their university. Their university had been selected to, to run experiments with these maze bright rats. They tell all the kids that, all the, all the classes. Now, the day comes, and one class, they said, hey, they're here, the maze bright rats. Oh, my goodness. We can't wait to see what kind of results you get. The other class, they tell the students, we don't know what happened. Those maze bright rats got shipped off to a different university. We did get some rats. They're probably maze dull compared to these other ones, but you guys can still do your experiments and let's see what kind of results you get. Well, what happens? Exactly as predicted. Maze bright rats made better times than ever. Maze doll rats, poor time. The question is, how did the rats know? And the answer is, the belief system of the teacher affected the outcome. Maze smart rat, I had high expectations, that energy. I never forgot that story. Throughout my career, Thank goodness. I mean, I have never judged a dog by its breed. When a dog came to me for training, <clears throat> to me, it was like, I didn't care what coat it was wearing. I just wanted to look in its eyes. To me, all that was important was who is in there. I have always known to look at each dog as an individual. You can't breed a soul. Last week, I heard a little story that broke my heart because a client that I was working with online told me that the dog trainer came to their house, didn't have much success, and said to them, well, he's probably not the sharpest tool in the show. Really? Instead of fixing the situation, they fixed the blame. So here's my question for you. Has anybody ever told you that your particular breed of dog, that they're not very smart? Oh yeah, we were told this breed's not very smart. We were told they're gonna be hard to train. That's what the breeder said. Well, you know what? If you want the best results possible, then you look at your dog with the highest regard with the greatest of expectations. And that's what you share with the client if you're a dog trainer. And if the dog doesn't do well, then we have to stop and say, what do I do different? What do I do different? I'm gonna attach a couple of Robert Rosenthal's experiments to this vlog today. Thanks for joining me. And just remember, the word behave, how we behave. Behave is a combination of two smaller words, be and have. How we behave will affect what we have. Thank you.